Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to video number 30 in the IC7300 from A to Z series. We're going to continue picking up some of the little bits and pieces items that we may have skipped over covering some of the major functions. Today we're going to take a look at the RF and squelch control and the settings for it. Let's get to it. Let's take a look at the function setting for the RF and squelch control knob, which is the outer knob here. We've used this on some previous episodes, but we're going to look at the options for that. So the setting for that is under menu, and then it's a set function. Then we go to function, and it will be on the second page of this menu at the very top, which is RF slash squelch control. Now, right now, I have it set for RF plus squelch, which is the default setting. And we'll go back and just quickly look at how it functions this way. You see the white knob, or the, the white mark at the top of the knob when it is set up as squelch and RF. As I go to the left, and you see the RFG or RF gain symbol show up, this starts to reduce my RF gain. So my RF gain goes from basically maximum here down to zero to the left. And then as I rotate to the right, it starts to turn up the squelch. Now in sideband mode, or CW or RIDI, any of the anything other than AM and FM, it operates as a signal strength squelch and you see the little marker show up right there on the screen that as I turn the knob up it goes all the way up to basically you can't you can't open the squelch when it's all the way up unless you're more than 60 dB over S9 so the knob operates as both functions and basically the middle is full gain and open squelch now, if we go in and we set it to uh, squelch mode, then in that mode, the knob operates only as squelch, and in sideband mode, it's a signal strength squelch, and if I go to FM, it's uh, noise squelch, so it goes by noise on the signal for this little segment here from about uh, 12 o'clock to about the 1 o'clock position and then it also activates the signal strength squelch even on FM but as I go to the left it doesn't decrease my gain and if I go back to sideband mode you'll see as I go back down I don't get any uh, change the, the RFG or RF gain symbol doesn't come up and it does not change my RF gain at all. Actually here if we go to uh, let's try to find some place where I might have some signals. I don't even have this antenna adjusted for anything but you can see a bunch of signals here and as I turn this down no change in the gain. So let's go to the automatic mode and in automatic mode it operates as RF gain only no squelch when you are in sideband CW any of those modes so if I uh, turn the gain down you can see the evidence of the gain going down and if I turn it all the way to the right nothing happens so it's RF gain only when I'm in sideband. And then I could go to FM here, but let's go to a more appropriate frequency. If we go to FM, it operates only as squelch and does not change the gain. Actually, just for grins, we'll go to FM mode on 40 meters. I don't think, oh, it actually, will it let me go to FM? Yes, it will. So you see the signal strength there, and as I turn the gain down, nothing happens. So um, in the automatic mode, it follows whatever mode you're in. 
So that's how it operates, and that's pretty straightforward. But um, here's an opinion piece on it. Honestly, I think you are best off to leave the RF squelch control in the RF squelch position where it's both RF gain and squelch all the time regardless of mode. Um, and the reason for that is this. When you put it in the RF gain mode, the RF gain only starts to decrease from about the 11 o'clock position down. So you have this much of the knob for your RF gain, regardless of whether it's in um, auto mode or RF plus squelch or, well, in squelch only, this does nothing. This half of the dial basically does nothing. And if you set it to the um, auto mode where it gives you either one function or the other, the squelch only starts when you start turning it from this half. So the three, the, the three different modes that they give you don't change how much of the dial you get. If you turned it to where it was squelch only and the squelch actually started all the way to the left and you got the whole range of the dial or the same with the RF gain, if you got the whole range of the dial for RF gain, then I could see where that would be useful. But for myself, I leave it in RF slash squelch all the time. And and actually, it's a very clever way to, to basically reduce what used to be two knobs down to one. And this way you get, you know, RF gain on the left half. And I typically am not going to want squelch with my RF gain reduced anyway. So you get your squelch on the right half. So that pretty much covers that function. All right, well, that's it for this time. We're going to continue on picking up some of the bits and pieces that we've missed along the way so that we cover everything before we're all done here. If you've enjoyed the episode, I'd appreciate some likes, and uh, I'll take dislikes if there's something you didn't like about it. Please leave your comments with uh, suggestions or corrections or anything else that you'd like in there. And if you're enjoying the series, please consider subscribing. You can do that by clicking the little button on the bottom right that'll pop up at the end. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and thanks for watching Ham Cured Smoke.